Okay, so we can take this information and we can try to make some clinical decisions with it, right? So we can um, use this as an example. So this is an MRI scan from a 10 year old boy who was just up in the mountain skiing, hit a tree, got a CT scan to evaluate him for a concussion. And they said, huh, it looks like there may be a Chiari on there. So he recovered from his concussion. He came back down to Denver, got an MRI scan, and this is the MRI scan. And you can see here, he's got about a, you know, six or eight millimeter tonsil herniation there. Uh, no syrinx is visible. And they said, yep, he's got a Chiari. He needs to go see neurosurgery. So he shows up in clinic and you see him. He's got no symptoms, no headache, no neck pain, neurologically normal. He's recovered from his concussion, just wants to go back to skiing and hanging out with his friends. So you say to yourself, okay, this is an incidental Chiari. There's no syrinx. Do I need to operate on this patient or not? So you're putting those puzzle pieces together, right? So with this kid, you may very well say, no, we're just going to watch this kid. But you need to complete the workup. You need a full MRI of the spine to look for a syrinx. So lo and behold, he's got a syrinx. Well, how much does that change your algorithm? So he's got an asymptomatic syrinx now. And for some people, they would say, look, syrinx buys you an operation. Others, maybe not. So you get into a gray area and that's fine. Uh, it's just another piece of data, another piece of the puzzle that you put together. But then let's say we take this exact same MRI scan and we tweak the story a little bit. So now you've got a kid who's got like classic symptoms, right? He's got a year of occipital headaches, they're really sharp, they're intense. Uh, they come along when he does sports and then as soon as he stops, they get better. And from recognizing this pattern, he actually quit his soccer team because he just had so much pain whenever he played, uh, but he doesn't have any neurological deficits. So that's a kid where you'd say, hey, you know, it may very well be that if we do a decompression, we can really help your symptoms and really improve your quality of life. So slightly different puzzle pieces to the story lead to a different recommendation in terms of what kind of therapy this guy needs. One thing I also wanted to mention um, was the concept of an acquired Chiari malformation. So this is something that you know looks like a Chiari one, generally speaking, but is induced by some other kind of condition. It's really important to think about these and recognize these. And the reason I bring it up is because oftentimes when a patient with a Chiari gets referred into CS, they may have just had a spine MRI scan and you don't get a look at their brain. Alternatively, they may just have a brain and you don't get a look at their spine. And it's really important that you get a look at the entire neuroaxis so that you can know for sure that when you diagnose a Chiari, that's what's going on. So things that can commonly lead to what's called an acquired Chiari are hydrocephalus, that right, pushes the cerebellum down, some kind of other space occupying lesion in the brain. Craniosynostosis is a good one. It squeezes from the top. So you'd usually see that in a young baby. A spinal CSF leak, that's a pretty rare reason to have one, certainly a spontaneous occult one, but if you have a history of a known CSF leak uh, or basically a controlled CSF leak, right? Lumboperitoneal shunting. So this scan is actually from a kid who um, we started taking care of last week he's in the hospital right now. So he comes in, he's got what looks like a Chiari malformation. We scan his head and boom, he's got a big tumor. So the reason he has a Chiari is because of this. So what do you do? You take care of the tumor. You don't worry about the Chiari. Similarly, kid has hydrocephalus. You take care of the hydro and then you see if the Chiari is still a problem or not. So it's important to be thinking holistically about these things and to recognize that just because someone has a Chiari doesn't mean that there isn't something that's driving it. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.